You're welcome. It's wonderful to be here. I'm uh, I'm so uh, I'm so excited to finally meet you. You know, I mean, I I, I, re I read the book rather quickly. I have to admit, but and and I just want to tee this up for the audience, everybody out there, because you had you had this line. And I want to get to why you wrote the book, okay? Um, and at one point, you say, you know, I couldn't help but start thinking. I'm going to paraphrase as best I can, but I couldn't. I couldn't stop but thinking about motorcycles and, this, and people were saying I was thinking too much and you responded with the only time you can possibly think too much is having sex and I thought that was a hilarious line um, and so but I wanted to ask you what prompted you to write The Perfect Vehicle? I got I got so excited about what I was doing that nobody had ever told me about it's like wow there's this amazing world it's no it's a universe right it's 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 as big as anything i'd ever experienced before and it was like this huh secret and i i wanted to like shake people and say do you not understand what this means what it feels like how you know sort of all encompassing it is and so i was sort of writing it in my head as I was riding along and I thought I was naively I thought I was going to explain to other people what riding was uh, <laughs> now now what what how long ago did you write that book uh you know it was another lifetime it came out in 1997 97 I was trying to I was trying to I didn't look at the copyright at the beginning I was trying to think of it because you mentioned something in there which uh which I'm sure you must be so happy about now that you know, in the book, you're talking about seven to twelve percent of having female riders. Now, the, there's nineteen percent is the latest statistic coming out of the Motorcycle Industry Association of female yeah. riders. There's a, all of a sudden this huge surge. You must be very happy about that. It's it's a beautiful thing because I used to, you know, I could ride for weeks or months and very rarely ever see another woman. Um, so it's beautiful to see myself coming and going these days, as it were. I, I bet. I absolutely bet. And and you also talk about. Um, I mean, it must be also easier too now with more women on the um, on the road, motorcycling, going on tours. You don't have to share motel rooms with 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 guys anymore. I'll be a plutonic. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be sharing those kind of room those rooms anymore. Um, yeah, that was an edu that's an education in and of itself, you know, before I understood what men were about. It's like when you when you are, you know, brushing teeth with somebody you don't know and and uh, you know, bedding down in the next uh queen size. It's very interesting. <laughs> the tell me about um well, let me ask you a question about women riders. Why do you think women are being attracted to motorcycling now? You know, I don't know what really triggered it, but, um, you know, just I think that incremental change you see when you see yourself, when you see another woman, it, all of a sudden it becomes possible. If you don't see yourself, if you're erased from an experience, you don't see the representation, then it doesn't occur to you necessarily that it's a possibility. I think that might be it. Hmm. I, 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 I. Well, I think one of the appeals of motorcycling in general is it's uh, it, it as a whole. Um, not only do I often say that it, it recreates the freedom that we first had when we first got our two uh, got on two wheels as a child, and 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 and, be, and we try to recreate that every time we get on a motorcycle. We we, we long for that experience, um, and that's the that's the close. That's what it does for me anyway. I mean, there's many many perspectives on this issue, but um, but I think what I was getting at here. Is that I I see more and more it's 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 a form of independence and you talk about this in the book you talk about it's a it's a way to exp it's, it's a form of self expression in many respects it, it becomes who you are and although we're all different and we're in even within our groups you talk about mm -hmm. um, you know there are Harley riders there are Indian riders there are Moto Guzzi riders like yourself BMW riders but but the, that string that underlying string is it seems to what be what connects everybody. Yeah, absolutely. It's like when you when you are in the company of another rider, you realize there's this whole um, shelf that you don't need to explain. This part of yourself that you know that they already understand. You don't have to, um, you know, get feel like maybe you're looked askance at because why why do you do that crazy thing? You know, we don't we don't have to bother with that. We can just get right to the next. 
thing, you know. It, it's interesting. I, a lot of celebrities I've read that they love motorcycling because they love the anonymity that it provides as well. They put on a full face mask and they're just like everybody else on the road. Yeah. Well, I, I like the anonymity too. I mean, I'm sort of a little bit of a misanthrope or loner kind of person. And when you can get on your bike and, you know, behind the helmet, I think helps, but the feeling that you can escape, you know, anything, um, and you can escape, you know, gravity, you can escape the, you know, whatever psychic bonds you've, you know, you feel in daily life, you're absolutely alone. You're with others, but you're alone. Yeah, and, and I'm so happy you're explaining that because uh, there's a part of my viewing audience that really are following the, the retro motel side, and they're not into motorcycling the same thing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, I sort of bridge the two together because it's a natural fit, and um, but not everybody could see that connection. So there are people out there who might not understand what, what's the connection between motorcycles and motels. You really eloquently, um, you really eloquently wrote, uh, said this at one point, and I'm going to just try to bring up um, the, there we go. I brought, I, I just brought it up right now. And, and there was early on in the passage you wrote, um, the evening also marked the first time I enjoyed the surpassing and peculiar satisfaction of relaxing on a, mot on a motel curb with your motorcycle inches away and all the possessions you need also in sight on the uh, uncreased bed in the open room at your back. I thought that was absolutely beautiful um, because that's exactly the way I feel when I about motels. So... You know, I, I looked at it and I said, there we go. Sorry, I just brought myself back there. And I said, you know, this tell tell me about your experience about traveling and why you enjoy motels so much. I, you know, it's funny. I know I know that they were and you go into the history of why they were built and and you know, what, what their function was in the, you know, the motoring, the flower, great flowering of the motoring age. But to me, they were really made for motorcyclists in particular. You know, you it's like you could practically bring your bike into your room. And I think I've heard of some people who have done that. You know, it, you, you find yourself, there's a, a hurricane coming. What are you going to do? You're going to save your bike. Um, and so it's, you know, you know that just on the other side of that door, at, at your same level, is the machine that brought you there and to me just like you know a, a beautiful summer evening with the door open and you know just communicating with my bike at a distance by looking at it i think you learn a lot about your bike just by staring at it you find little leaks for instance um yeah <laughs> you know, I, i've found a lot of things that could have presented uh, big problems later if if I hadn't just you know sat there staring it you know it's the end of it's the end of that day's ride and it's filled with the promise of the next day's ride you know I mean when you're in an anonymous chain hotel on the fourth floor you know you're distant from that experience you, you, you've nailed it and I, I mean I was privileged because I got to spend 50 nights doing that exact thing last uh, last summer and and it, it's a strange connection when you're sitting outside in your chair in the in the motel chair your bike is parked right in front of you and all your possessions are behind you and you just it's a comfort it's a security blanket and a comfort zone for you at the because same time because you're complete you feel like you are absolutely complete. You know that you're all that you, you have everything you need, everything. You, so you you brought the portable world with you and you're in this temporary home that ha also contains everything that you need. It is, like you say, the word comfort. It is, it's, a, it's, a, it's beyond that, I think it's a solace. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. Now, this wasn't the only, but let's move on because I want to talk about you. You have another book that you also wrote about motorcycle. You've written a, a five books now, is it? Four or five books yes, now in total? Five. 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 And only two about riding. Two about motorcycling. Let's talk about the second book about motorcycling. I haven't read it yet. I, that'll be on my download list next. Um, and what, what's it called? And tell me a little bit how it came to be. 
it's called The Man Who Would Stop at Nothing. And the, the titular character is, um, was an extreme long distance rider. And after I took um, a break of about a decade from riding, he was the person who brought me back because in a way he knew something that I didn't know, which is that I needed it. Hmm. You know, I needed to be riding. And um, because riding was at the center of his life, he didn't see why it shouldn't be at the center of everybody else's too. Um, and uh, John Ryan was an extraordinary human being and um, an exceptional rider um, in every way. He did crazy things. And when I, when I learned about what he was doing and that there was this whole world of extreme long distance riding, which has only gotten, you know, between the perfect vehicle and riding the man who would stop at nothing, um, long distance riding has really exploded. I mean, it used to be just, you know, a really tiny, tiny percentage of riders. Um, and now it's more and more. And these people are, they're insane, I guess, in a, in a good way. You cool. could say. Well, you have all those people who do the iron butts, and then there's the, yeah. uh, uh, and then there's people like me who just who look for adventures in all kinds of unique adventures out there, um, mm -hmm. and and I think motorcycling offers that opportunity. It's a, it's a unique opportunity to be able to get around to places that you probably would not normally go. Um, oh, absolutely. Do you know, by the way, what um, what the term for, what uh, long distance rider calls? Um, you know, sleeping on your tank, uh, catching a few, that's the iron butt motel. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Uh, that, that's interesting. <laughs> the iron butt motel. I like that. Well, maybe that might be a follow-up, a uh, follow-up piece <laughs> at some point. Um, Melissa, tell me, uh, like you said, you're not, you, you, you have five books, but you also write in other genres as well. What, uh, what, uh, tell me about a couple about the other books that you've written as well. Um, you know, I just sort of write about the stuff that interests me and it usually incorporates some aspect of, you know, memoir, personal story, because that's why I get interested in what I'm interested in, whether it's the natural world, the built world, um, animals, a big, that's a big part of my life. Horses were, you know, a huge part of my girlhood, like a lot of other girls. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a lot of confluence, by the way, between women motorcyclists and horseback riders. Um, a lot. I think there's the same elements of um, freedom and control and, um, you know, mastery that that women get from both riding horses and bikes. But at any rate, um, you know, I sort of, I just, I sort of write about what, what path, what passion I feel, uh, for things. That's well, you're, uh, Melissa, you're a beautiful writer and I hope you continue writing for a very long time. I'm just going to bring back up everybody so people can see that you, your book again. Um, let me just do that for a second. So I'm going to strongly recommend that people look to, um, Melissa's book, uh, there is the perfect rider, uh, the perfect uh, vehicle, excuse me. And uh, Melissa, thank you so much for your time tonight. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to uh, to maybe catching up with you in a little bit. Maybe we can go for a ride. You're only in New York. So when all this That's is done, nice. when all this is done, I look forward to being you. And, and you're married to, to a guy who rides as well, right? Yes. Yes. So I'm looking for maybe we can all get together and go for a Let's ride sometime. That. I look yep. forward to it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Melissa Holbrook Pearson. And uh, what a great surprise. I'm so pleased. Again, her book again is The Perfect Vehicle. I strongly recommend it. And and uh, I strongly recommend you, you download a copy because that's probably the easiest way right now. Or if you don't download it from on a Kindle, you can actually go to, uh, to Amazon. It's available there or her website. I am going to bring up her website. Uh, you can always go to her website directly at uh, Melissa Holbrook.